What do you guys say we go ahead and wrap up this Chattanooga thing so that we can get to talking about the Iron Bowl? You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel, and thank you for making us your first listen every day. You guys are the absolute best. You know we love you. And uh, so, Jimmy, we're going to wrap up some Chattanooga right now. And, um, you know, the first thing, I meant to say this in the last podcast. You know, one thing that um, I don't guess it bothered me necessarily, um, I can't. I think Jermaine, I mean, excuse me, I think um, – uh, Jason McClellan got in for a touchdown, but you know, one of the better passes of the day for J- from Jalen Milrow was a, pa- a deep pass to Jermaine Burton, and it's like Burton sort of forgot where he was on the field, and what it reminded me of, and maybe nobody else thinks about this, but when uh, Amari Cooper caught a pass from AJ McCarron against Notre Dame in the uh, national championship. He caught when he was so super wide open that he, he sort of caught it and then was just going to jog. And he almost, he thought, I think he thought he was almost in the end zone. He had to stop himself from going out of bounds and then uh, end up getting in the end zone. But Jermaine Burton, I thought, I was like, man, how did you not score right there? I wanted that to be a, another touchdown pass. Yeah, I think he might have even gotten a little banged up. Uh, he, he asked out of the game right after that happened. So I, I was worried that he pulled something and then he, he missed a couple of series uh, after that. So I don't know what happened because it, it didn't look apparent, but something weird sort of happened because because Burton asked to come out. So so I, I, I don't know what that meant. But, yeah, I thought that throw from Jalen was better than the first deep throw to Burton because Burton had to wait on it. Now, it wasn't a terrible throw. A terrible throw means, you know, he literally would have had to wait on it and been tackled right where he caught it. Uh, no, it just made him slow up just a tad. And uh, so it was a really good throw, just not a great throw. It was a great throw to Burton on the second one. And he probably should have gotten in again. I, I got the feeling that he pulled something or just got somehow banged up on the play. And maybe that's why he didn't score, because it did look kind of funny. Well, you know, I, I think that what this is, is more of th- this team still has room to grow. I'm not looking at it. I'm not nitpicking. I want people to understand I'm not being negative. You know, um, I shouldn't do this just about. But I like to read the comments and respond to the podcast. There were a couple of folks that commented like, you know, y'all quit propping up Ty Simpson, Jalen Milrow's quarterback. We love Jalen Milrow. We love him. And we want him to be. I posted a picture of me and Jalen Milrow's dad the other day. Okay. Um, But all we were saying was it was nice to see Ty Simpson look better. I mean, he's grown too. Now, he hadn't grown at the rate that Jalen Milrow has, but he hadn't played as much as Milrow has. But I'm just saying that's a positive. And just like this, I'm not saying that, uh, oh, boy, Jermaine Burton sucks because he didn't score then. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying Mm -hmm. is there's still, like, (laughs) there's still this much. And for the audio people, I'm doing, like, an inch and a half with my fingers. Um, So there's still this much improvement this team can have. And that's kind of what separates us from Georgia right now, if you ask me. Look, I think Alabama can beat anybody in the country, and I'm including Georgia. I think Alabama would have the least chance of beating Georgia than anybody else in the country, and I include Texas. Because we, I know we lost to Texas. I understand. Don't have to tell me. We lost by 10. I get it. I'm just saying that when I watch Georgia play, they seem to be a well-oiled machine right now. Everybody else has some mild flaws. I think Alabama has the fewest mild flaws, but um, I think everybody else has got something that's, you know, is not quite right. I mean, even Michigan, you know, as good as they've looked at times, it took a lot of uh, iffy calls for them to be able to end up taking care of Maryland. So um, anyway, I just, I I know I'm nitpicking there, but I just thought that was, uh, that was interesting. And is there anything else from the Chattanooga game you want to, you want to wrap up? A few things. I mean, uh, I like how Alabama played a ton of guys. I joked before the game that success would be that the game looked like A-Day in terms of 
how many players Alabama played at the game and that Alabama played as many players as they would at A-Day, and they almost did. Uh, I, I think playing that many players was huge. I think creating a score that looks good on the screen is good in so far as the national perception of Alabama. Let's remember that back in September, Georgia's fans, LSU's fans, Texas's fans, everybody was like, Alabama's done. That, that dynasty's over. Uh, everybody's moved on from Alabama. They're not a thing anymore. <laughs> But look at Alabama now. Uh, that, that that's what what's fun for me is so so many people that are now fearing Alabama were people that have written Alabama off two months ago, and then you see that sc- that score flash across the screen, sixty six to ten. You see Jalen's name discussed am- among Heisman candidates. Uh, you know th- things are looking pretty good now. Obviously, two weeks from now, it's 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 the ultimate test, almost a a, a final of some sort. If we, if everything has been a midterm. Till now, uh, Georgia is the final, uh, but uh, but there's one more hurdle to cross, and, and Auburn. And uh, speaking of, of of Auburn, we'll talk about that that coming up. I took a look today at Auburn, Georgia. Uh, ironically, our next two opponents have played each other, so I think that's interesting to discuss. But uh, Chattanooga wise, Alabama not just took care of business. I think Alabama sent yet another message that the dynasty is not dead. That's the most points Alabama has scored uh, when they've played these FCS type opponents under Nick Saban. We hadn't scored 70 on anybody under Saban, have we? I don't remember. No, 66 is the high. This is it. We tied the previous high, which was 66. Against Ole Miss, maybe? Uh, against uh, Wofford. Uh, I know okay. I know we scored 66 in this FCS type thing before. I don't think we got up to 66 against Ole Miss. I think we were a little less. Off the top One of my year head, we 62. beat Ole Miss at least like sixty-two or sixty-three to three. I might have been. Yeah, up, yeah. Not, no. It was in the it was in the low sixties, but I think sixty-six is the most points a Saban team has scored at Alabama. Which, speaking of Auburn, is sort of disappointing to me because in two thousand twelve we could have scored one hundred and sixty-six had we wanted to. <laughs> yeah, that would have been fun. That that could have kept on going. Did we beat Auburn? Well, we beat Auburn fifty-five, fifty-four. I think. Well, what, what, no, 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 fifty-five, forty-four. 55-44. Okay. Yeah, uh, because right. that was the game that uh, Blake Sims, I mean, he was sort of, you know, he was just sort of bad for the first half, and then he just said, oh, I'm just going to throw it up, and Amari Cooper's down there somewhere. And and Auburn kept single covering uh, and, and yeah. not doubling Amari Cooper, and he just kept toasting him. I think that was when Gus w- 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 spent the whole off season bragging about how he scored so many points against Alabama. I'm like – Alabama could have scored 80 in that game if they wanted to. Well, you know, I mean, that was whatever. that was 14, and uh, I think Auburn had a yeah. uh, receiver named Duke Williams who was more of a m- mythical legend in the sense that, I mean, he, he was also always rumored to be better than he actually performed. But in that game, he performed pretty well. And Sammy Coates also had a pretty good game then, too. I do, but, I do remember that. And I think this Alabama team, by the way, uh, we'll see how it goes, but this Alabama team – more so than any other year has reminded me of 2014. Yeah. I think to some extent that still continues. If I had to pick out a previous Saban team that this team reminds me of, I'm sticking with 2014 and, uh, and, and they did defeat Auburn. So by 11, as you pointed out, I think it's gonna be a little more than that. I'm, 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 I'm more and more optimistic. Uh, the more I dig into it of, of, of Alabama winning this game somewhat comfortably after maybe some anxious moments. We're going to talk about the status of maybe the most talked about recruit in the last several years in the state of Alabama, and that's Ryan Williams. When we come back, you're going to want to listen to that. You're going to want to listen to this. And in fact, you're going to check out, want to check out listening.com. Listening.com is an app that turns academic papers and textbooks and PDFs and websites and emails into audio so you can listen to them on the go. That's huge. I'm a big traveling guy. This is going to help me a ton. Instead of sitting at a desk to read, our app frees you up so you can learn from anywhere. We're the best app in the world for listening to academic material. We can read math equations, automatically skip citations and footnotes, and can pronounce difficult technical words. Other key features, one-click note-taking. Click the plus note button while listening, and we can put the sentence you're listening to into a notepad. Automatic chapter detection. Many students want to jump straight to the results or discussion of a paper. uh, Listening.com automatically detects where the chapters are so you can jump around and data tables. 
We pull out all the data tables so you can review them visually inside the app. Our users are 50% PhDs, 30% college students, and 20% working professionals. This is absolutely a fantastic resource for you. College students, listen up. There's this incredible app called listening.com. I'm telling you, you want to listen to it. If we've got some college students to listen, I know they do. And it can take any academic paper, PDF, or class material and turn it into an audio book. That is so awesome. Go to listening.com slash locked on. That's listening.com slash locked on. Give it a whirl. Uh, you can use that link that I just mentioned, listening.com slash locked on. You'll be able to get your first three weeks for free, listening.com slash locked on. So Ryan Williams visited Alabama this past weekend, um, you know, taking mm-hmm. on Chattanooga. And uh, he goes up there. He goes up there with Antonio Coleman. He goes up there with another teammate, a wide receiver. This is junior uh, at Sarah Land. By the way, Sarah Land moves on in the playoffs. Could talk a little bit about the playoff bracket, too, because it's interesting. Um, Jalen Mbakwe, Clay uh, Chalk will move on, et cetera. And so I think those two are on a collision course. Clay Chalk will against Sarah Land for the 6A state championship on a Friday night in Tuscaloosa. <sighs> yeah, that's going to be awesome. fun. It, that's what I think is going to happen. But anyway, um, Ryan Williams, I mean, look, it wasn't – he didn't say, I'm 100% going to Alabama. I'm not even listening to anybody ever. And everybody that uh, says I'm going somewhere else is a liar. But he came really close to saying that. <laughs> I mean, he, he almost he said, put words in his mouth. Almost. Yeah. He, he said he said he's locked in. He said, yeah, I mean, I see all the things other people are saying, but I'm going to Alabama. And uh, he said, but I'm enjoying the recruiting process. And again, 15 years ago, I was like, well, that's people don't know the word of commitment anymore. No, nah, I mean, it, it, you only get to do this once. And you're only going to be wooed like this one time. I get it. And you know what? He's prob- he's going to go to the Iron Bowl next week, I'm pretty sure. And he's going to get a free ticket. And he's going to have the carpet, red carpet rolled out for him. He's going to be treated oh, like Orange a and blue carpet. It's the orange yeah, and blue orange carpet blue over car- there. Yeah. We hope it ends up being a red carpet. But mm-hmm. let him go. And I mean, it's just one of those things. Um, and look, I I – I don't. Th- I think he's going to Alabama. I really believe that. I'm. I feel better about Ryan Williams at Alabama than I ever have. If he surprises me, very well could. But I, I'm just saying. I feel like Ryan Williams will end up at Alabama. I know Jimmy, you do too. And um, I think he's going to end up reclassifying. And I think he'll be in this this upcoming class. I do. And I'm, I'm thrilled about that. Yeah, I, I think with the reclassifying, I've talked about this before. That's up to Ryan and his family in terms of if and when they're going to announce that and 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 that that, that might be something that that's coming uh, but announcing your reclassifying again like i would explain it to, to anyone it's not a decision you don't decide you're going to graduate early you have to actually do the work <laughs> you know you don't want to announce i'm graduating from medical school you sort of have to go to medical school and then do all the medical school work. And then they, if you're, if your grades are good enough, then you're it's so announcing your reclassifying. I mean, you can announce that you're going to try. Right. And I, I think he's beyond that. Most likely. I think there's been some effort, uh, uh, but, but you have to do all the work. Uh, and, and, and one other thing I would throw in is, and since he's reclassifying and that's a very difficult thing to do, that could be a thing that, that doesn't happen. Understand that if he's graduating early and, and being, you know, in school in January, that means graduating a year and a half early. That's that might be too much to ask. So I won't be stunned uh, if we find out. Yeah, he's trying to reclassify, but but most likely that'll mean next May, next June, not December, yeah. because graduating a year and a half early is a wow. But he would still sign in December, right? I mean, probably. Maybe, maybe. I, I honestly don't know. Uh, maybe February. You know, uh, that, that could happen too. Yeah. You know, the, the only reason I just want to get the, – the longer it goes on, the more we – you know, the more doubt. Not, yep. And, again, I'm comfortable if he signs in February. If he says he's going to sign in February, I'll believe him. But I'm just saying it's it's more fo- internet fodder. Oh, yeah. Right there. Oh, yeah. And I, and I get that, and, the, and that will continue. But that's just going to be the case with him until – He's on a campus, which I believe will be Alabama. Said, uh, uh, we'll see what happens. I, I, I certainly this is this is another thing I believe he's worth all the fuss. Yeah, he's a dude, man. I mean, he, he's absolutely a dude. I, I I think he may be as gifted a wide receiver as Alabama has signed. 
you know, in the Saban era. And I do want to run down the 6A bracket here for just a second. Uh, you've got Sarah Land sure. taking on Hillcrest Tuscaloosa. Uh, that will be at Sarah Land. Then you've got um, an interesting matchup, if you ask me, because it's Benjamin Russell taking on Pike Road. And, and if you listen to this podcast, you know I'm from Alexander City. Benjamin Russell also has a prospect in Malcolm Simmons, who's going to Auburn, who, frankly, he, he's rated as a three-star. I think he's better than that. I do. I think he's a really, really good player. If he were in Alabama's class, I'd be happy with it. Um, and uh, they play, play Pike Road, who's got Malik Blockton, another defensive tackle that is committed to Auburn as well. Auburn. So that could be a lot of fun. That's going to be at um, in, in LX City on Friday night. And then on the other side, here's <laughs> this is where – I mean, so think about this. you got Parker taking on Gadsden City. Parker, of course, Naheem Alford, uh, Jeremiah Beeman. They, they've got some dudes. Um, then they've got uh, Muscle Shoals taking on Clay Chalkbull with Jalen Mbakwe. Uh, that's a good matchup right there. So you could have Parker taking on Clay Chalkbull. And cool. I would say Benjamin Russell Dude. taking on Sarah Land. Oh, my God, what two matchups that would be in 6A. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 6A to me is kind of where it's at. Although a 7A final between Thompson and Central Phoenix City oh, to me is ridiculous. also a heavyweight that's championship ridiculous. of the world. So I, I think there could be some really fun uh, matchups. But uh, – the 6A one is the one I would look forward to the most. Uh, Clay Chalkwell versus Sarah Land uh, would be great. And uh, j- just – and, and it very well could be the last high school games of Ryan Williams' career trying to repeat as Mr. Football as a junior. That's the first time that's ever been said uh, because no one's in a sophomore. I think it ever won Mr. Football. But uh, R- Ryan is, again, absolutely worth all the fuss, worth all the rankings. If anything, he's underranked. Uh, but let, let's see. I mean, graduate from high school early, if he does that, presents some challenges, I think, physically. I mean, in terms of, hey, you know, he, he it ain't like he's matching up against the Kool-Aids and the Terrion Arnolds, even as good as 6A football in Alabama is. So uh, we'll see. Uh, but, no, I, I'm, I'm with you, Luke. I've never been more optimistic about Ryan in Alabama as I am right now. Uh, super huge priority for Alabama and Nick Saban and – I, I believe it'll ultimately pay off, but there's probably going to be some anxious moments because the kid likes going on his trips. That's true. Uh, by the way, just another side note, um, I've talked this kid up some, a kid named Cole Gamble at Mountain Brook. He's, yeah. his, his dad's a buddy of mine. His mom's also a buddy of mine. They're good people. And he's a, I mean, he's just an awesome dude. He's just a good kid. He's, he's salt of the earth and uh, just a good kid. I don't know what to tell you. And he is a hard worker and Cole Gamble has absolutely eaten people up this year and they played a tough schedule he has I mean he's got to be close to leading the state in rushing I don't know what the stats are but Alabama offered him a preferred walk-on you know yeah is he um is he uh Sean Alexander Derrick Henry no he's not but if you if Alabama gets him on as a preferred walk-on nobody will be happier than me so pretty interesting to me. I don't know Cole's game like you do uh, at all or, or know the gambles like you do, which is which is great. Uh, just from a, a brief watching of some clips I've seen, what's interesting to me is I wonder if he's going to play running back or defensive back at Alabama. Because to me, it looks like he's a guy that that might be a defensive back at the next level. But obviously, he's a, a, a really good 7A running back in Alabama. So, um, Yeah, I guess he could be defensive back, but I mean – <laughs> He's just a good running back. He's just I, – yeah. I mean, that's what I would say he's probably going to be. But, you know, sure. you have a ton of good running backs at Alabama, and uh, you have a better chance of getting on the field probably if you are a defensive back. But regardless, um, I'm, I'm happy for him. So, uh, good kid. Um, Jimmy, we're, when we come back, we're going to find out about some of the injured players and, and make sure everybody's good for the Iron Bowl coming up. Maybe even just talk a little bit about the Iron Bowl, maybe an Iron Bowl memory or something like that because – you know, I could talk Iron Bowl memories for God knows how long. I mean, it's it is it's my least favorite game and my favorite game, both at the same time. <laughs> I think I'm not alone when I when I say that. But right now I want to tell everybody about FanDuel. Score early and often this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar money line bet. With any of them, that's one hundred and fifty bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is absolutely no better time to get in on the action than right this very minute. This app is so easy to use. Jimmy's using it. I'm using it. It's super easy. There's a wide range of betting options, including 
spreads, and player props, and over-unders, and much, much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and enjoy the NFL season, enjoy the college season, enjoy the NBA season, enjoy college basketball season. FanDuel.com has you covered. FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. Okay. Um, injuries, Jimmy. Is everybody – Everybody pretty good now? I think so. Uh, just from scanning the sidelines at the game uh, on Saturday, what I hear, uh, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic that, that there really won't be any missing. I'm optimistic. Uh, nothing certain at all. Uh, I'm sure there's still some uh, testing out. You know, there's got to be some full speed practice this week from Deontay and Jalen Key. But, yeah, I'm optimistic that, uh, that everybody that's all hands on deck. Uh, not sure about Ja'Cory Brooks, but, you know, he's been he's been banged up all year. He practically – it's not going to qualify for a red shirt because he's played in too many games. But this might as well have been a red shirt year for him. I mean, it's just one thing after another. It's just, just hadn't really been 100% full speed. So maybe not Brooks, maybe, but maybe not. But uh, Jalen Key, Deontay Lawson, I, I expect to see them back. Anybody that was banged up in the Chattanooga game I think is fine. So, yeah, Luca, I think – this team is remarkably healthy considering you're going into game 12. Yeah. And if, when you consider things like what we saw happen to Jordan Travis, um, yep. you know, or even to Graham Mertz at Florida, it, it makes you grateful that um, we hadn't had anybody hurt. There was a scary moment in the Chattanooga game where Jalen Milrow was sort of in a pile of people. And it, for a moment, I mean, just watching on TV, you're thinking, oh God, get up. I know there was a scary moment against Kentucky too. So um, yeah, that's, there was just One other thing to, to bring up about Milrow's injury, Luke, is, you know, he had negative rushing yards this weekend. He also had negative rushing yards in two games earlier this year when me and you were maybe hinting around that, that he was banged up. It's just funny. We know he was banged up Saturday, right? I think we all know he has a bruise on his thigh and, and it's affected him and he had no rushing yards. So I just want people to notice one final time that, you know, when Jalen's banged up, uh, he doesn't run. And, geez, I guess that's completely logical, right? So this was another game uh, where against Chattanooga, why would you run? You didn't need to run. And secondly, he's banged up. So he had negative rushing yards, just like he did in those two games earlier this year, the back-to-back -back games, when people were saying, why won't he run? Um, you know, hey, you know. Maybe I'm overthinking this, too. Sometimes it's not a good idea to run around. Maybe I'm overthinking this, but I would be willing to bet that that maybe the staff was like Jalen, don't run this game. If I mean, right. if it's wide open and you just can't help it, go for it. But see, I I I sort of like the fact that he saved all his running for LSU. Like when the LSU game yeah. comes around, and you know he does the zone read where he's he's always handed it off. We, he goes around the corner that first time, and there's nobody there because nobody expected it. Because you watch film, and we're you know human beings see tendencies and then we react on those tendencies. And so when you watch film and you see, he's not running, he's not running, he's not running. You don't go after him. So right. I, I think maybe we lulled some, at least LSU to sleep. Now that could also be that LSU has a horrendous defense. Also true. <laughs> also but, a factor. Um, yeah, that was a factor. I'm just saying maybe, maybe I'm reading too much into that. I just like the fact that the running option worked so well against LSU because I felt like we hadn't been using it all year, even though we on this podcast have been clamoring for it. It turns out maybe that was sort of the right thing to do. Well, he's either healthier is not a point out the LSU game was probably the healthiest he'd been in a while. And yet, if I remember correctly in the LSU game, he had a sleeve on his left arm uh, all the way from his wrist, all the way to his shoulder. He had a sleeve on one of his legs. You know, I think it was his left leg. He also had a sleeve on, so that's as healthiest as he's been, you know, and, and rushed for uh, 100 plus yards. So, hey, when you get sacked as many times as he's been sacked, I mean, he was sacked a ton in September and October, almost as many as, as any quarterback in the whole country. Uh, it's very difficult to, to keep a guy completely bruise free. And then we saw the thigh bruise uh, against Kentucky. And, and, and I think that held him up this past weekend. And, and again, like Luke said, I mean, why would you run? against Chattanooga, then throw in the fact that the leg's already not feeling great. But, uh, hey, it's it's bad news for Auburn, uh, bad news for Georgia, that I think you're going to see probably the healthiest Milrow we've seen in a while. And uh, I, I think those legs will be uh, up and ready for use uh, at Jordan-Hare and, uh, and at the Mercedes-Benz Dome 
in uh, two weeks. All right, buddy, that's going to do it for this podcast. I'm going to save some of those Auburn memories for later on in the week. I, I got to get my thoughts together. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll talk about that later on. Until then, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.